Hi, I'm Tom from the Self-Publishing Formula, and in this video, I'll be talking about the different softwares you can use to design a book cover. So first up, we have Photoshop. Um, this is the industry standard. It's probably the one that you've heard of the most out of the different softwares I'm going to be mentioning. Um, but it's actually surprisingly easy to use, and it's actually the software that Stuart Bache uses in his cover design for authors course. So if you plan on taking that course, it's probably worth investing in Photoshop to make the most out of it. Now, as I said, Photoshop is incredibly comprehensive, uh, yet easy to use. So you can quite easily manipulate images, um, merge them together, as you can see here, uh, comprehensive list of different fonts. Uh, it's easy to cut out different images. Pretty much anything that you want to do in a piece of graphic design software, you can do in Photoshop. Um, it's also great, in my opinion, for creating 3D box set art and things like that because you can use smart objects. So as you can see down here, there's a little icon there, you double click that and it opens up the image in a separate window. You make any changes you want, you then press the X, select save and it affects the final image. Now, it used to be that Photoshop had a one-off cost which was very expensive. Uh, but that's different now. Uh, Adobe have moved into their Creative Cloud suite, so you can actually subscribe with monthly payments to different apps depending on what you're going to need. And Photoshop by itself is about $9.99 a month, so quite affordable. Um, though, of course, if you do stop paying, you can't use the software anymore. Next up, we have Affinity Photo, which is a pretty good alternative to Photoshop. Uh, it's not as well known, but it's basically as comprehensive. Uh, it's pretty much all the same features and just about as powerful once you're used to it. The only downside is that it is slightly trickier to get used to. Uh, and you don't, as far as I'm aware, get the ability to sort of manipulate smart objects, as I showed with Photoshop. But you do get largely all the same features. As you can see, they've tried to make it as similar in appearance to Photoshop as possible. Um, but there is a great uh, upside to Affinity Photo, which is that you only have to pay a one-off payment, and that payment is about, usually it's just under £50, pounds, uh, but often there are sales where you can get it for below 40 which of course is a bargain if you're planning to use it for more than four months, because then it's already paid for itself, as opposed to Photoshop. So next we have GIMP. GIMP stands for GNU Image Manipulation Program. It's a cross-platform image editor available for Linux, Mac, and Windows. More importantly, it's entirely free. You can change the source code and even distribute your updated version afterwards. That means loads of people have developed plugins, which you can then utilize also for free. Uh, it's a very professional bit of kit, but I've heard it's not the most intuitive to use, and given that it's not as well known as the other options, you might find it harder to discover tutorial videos on YouTube. All that said, it is a comprehensive piece of graphic design software and, unlike the previous two options, it is completely free. Okay, and last of all we have Canva, which is free as well and very easy to use, but it is also by far the most limiting. However, it is good for creating a variety of things, as you can see here, we've got Facebook covers, we've got various social media images, and most importantly, down in personal, we've got book covers. Now, if you click that, you can go into the editor. And as you can see, it has loads of preset ideas that you can then fiddle around with and create your own. You can upload your own images uh, and you can change the text. And uh, It's pretty good for that, but it, it is more like applying an Instagram filter than it is really doing any proper graphic design uh, or image manipulation. Um, but all that being said, if, if money is uh, tight and you can't afford to go with Photoshop or Affinity Photo or to outsource, then Canva is a much better alternative to anything that might come free with your actual computer. Ultimately, we would recommend that you get a professional to design your book cover, as it's the first impression a reader is going to have of your book. But if for whatever reason you don't want to go down that route, Photoshop is a very, very comprehensive and professional piece of kit, and if money's an issue, then Canva can definitely create a book cover that you'll be proud of. So, that was our video on which graphic design softwares you can use to design a book cover. If you enjoyed it, make sure to subscribe by pressing the button below.